afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another Propaganda Cast Live with me, your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only master of instruction and teaching you how to play the game better. Today's topic is going to be the Ostwoman Squad. Yes, indeed, part of Ostwoman Doctrine and Defensive, though they are Doctrines and can sort of get them via Relief Infantry. The Ostwoman is an incredibly cheap infantry unit in the game, probably the cheapest six man squad at just 200 manpower, an absolute bargain, plus you can get them. Well, pretty fast if you go for the right doctrines. So you might be asking yourself, what's the catch? Well, effectively, there are two catches. A, they're very easy to kill because they have very sort of negative re received action modifiers, meaning they're actually easier to kill than other infantry, so they're much easier to hit. And secondly, they can't hit the broadside of a barn from the inside out of cover. Like, they have incredibly poor accuracy in cover, though they actually have pretty good accuracy, meaning they actually have good DPS. But it overall means the Ostrom as an infantry unit is in incredibly reliant on any kind of cover like light or heavy cover they need cover or they are effectively useless in combat even with like high degrees of veterancy they are not very good without cover so when it comes to using the Ostrom it very much comes down to being able to use cover very efficiently being able to use it to flank your opponents and whatnot if you want to like, use them even remotely aggressively it also means that while they're pretty good in the early game which is why you see usually a lot of strategy involving a lot of Ostrom early on as the game progresses, they quickly drop a lot in utility, even with, you know, a recent addition, which is you're getting extra light machine, and once you hit tier 4, they're not actually very good infantry at that stage, because, again, the high dependence on cover means they're not really good at supporting your attacks, which is what you really need for. So usually, at a certain point, you'll want to bring up other stuff to back up your tanks, because the Ostrom, simply put, can't do it. Like, they just cannot support a moving attack with armor, and that's really one of the major weaknesses in the longer game. They just don't really work in a longer game. Like, they can sort of hold certain points, but the problem is that they are not right now. If you try to play a static defensive game in the late game, you're gonna get crashed. So, they sort of have, a, shall we say, a bit of a limited shelf time to really get the action in on them. And usually, want to try use Ostrom to just quickly swarm the field. Usually, get like three or four squads that they should get a lot out faster. Usually, overcoming one of the Wehrmacht's early weaknesses, which is, well, you actually have to build the infantry to get our infantry. Usually, infantry hits the field later, but with Ostrom, your infantry can heal. Can hit fast, in fact, get out a lot more into faster than your opponents. So, with the Ostrom, you can actually just grab huge swaths of territory early on, and that's usually what we want to do. The Ostrom, so just grab a lot of territory, then back up machine guns and support weapons, and then back up with, shall we say, more elite infantry and whatnot, and then sort of really carry the day. But really, when it comes to the Ostrom, it really boils down to being able to use cover. If you don't have to use cover, you're gonna have a really bad time with Ostrom because you're gonna get absolutely destroyed. So that's really something to keep in mind. Also, they are not exactly, of course, blob infantry. It's going to be difficult to, you know, hold up this. It's going to, again, mastering sort of infantry movements. The Ostrom, like, you know, have one squad pinned down the unit behind cover, then moving another Ostrom squad up behind to flank them behind their cover using, of course, another piece of cover. Is that possible? Obviously, Ostrom, usually as part of the doctrine, can lay down sandbags. So otherwise, otherwise, you really want other stuff to lay down sandbags like pioneers because if there is no cover, again, in the situation we're trying to fight in, they're going to be useless. So sandbags, for example, or trenches, depending on the doctrine, are also really good and crucial elements to work together with the Ostrom on in, like, longer games. So at least that way, you sort of slightly extend the lifetime on the defense because usually covers on the things things and just get absolutely blown to bits anyways. But if you can master cover usage, and of course cover creation, you can usually get some uh, good action of the Ostrom. But again, they're very much sort of early, mid-game infantry. Again, late game, they just tend to sort of fall a bit flat. Even with stuff like the field officers slightly boost their combat ability further. So really, as the game progresses, you usually want stuff like Panzer Grenadiers to sort of help carry the fight somewhat. Because even with the light machine guns, the Ostrom just don't really do well. And again, in that regard, they're not assault infantry. They're sort of just really cheap line infantry that can sort of help hold the line initially, grab some lines. But again, as the game progresses, their efficiency basically sort of just dives down. Initially, you can also use stuff like half tracks to reinforce them on the front line. And also worth keeping in mind, Ostrom have a very fast reinforcement time. So Ostrom backed up by half tank and just keep reinforcing rapidly. Though, of course, you have to be careful you don't get attracted into finding bad engagement. Of course, they can just bleed you out because, again, you just keep reinforcing them without thinking. You just keep reinforcing them and then you just bleed yourself dry by a half tank. But at the same time, in the right place, Two Ostrom squads, whatever, backed up by half tank can be a really difficult thing to opponent to deal with because can you just quickly replace the losses. So at the right time, the right place, Ostrom backed up by a half track is actually in a really potent sort of way, just quickly catching a penalty of guard and just winning an engagement. But again, it's going to be engagement that's going to be absolutely strategically critical because again, you're just throwing away manpower just to win an engagement. You're not going to again last very long, but if you can use it to sort of, you know, win the crucial engagement to just force away your opponent, gain a strategic piece of territory, and then quickly dig in there with sandbags, trenches, bunkers, whatever, and then hold it. 
I mean, then it'll be worth it. So those are some things to keep in mind there. And it, as well, and you can also use command bunkers, obviously, to sort of form up stronger defensive points. And again, fast reinforcement time. The also awesome means, again, you can just quickly reinforce them and you just keep them at full strength. That way, keeping up firepower as well. So, if, like, for example, again, you got like a strong position, set up a command bunker, get some more trouble, and it can actually be difficult for your opponent just to easily push through. And they'll need to like push off a really strong assault and then really wedge you out of the positions. That can also work out at least for a while until your opponent decides to, so, I don't know, bring up artillery. So those are some things to keep in mind there about Ostrom as well. So that way, you know, she will say gain a few extra edges here and there. Though again, it's not going to something that's going to win you entire one. They should really just completely destroy your opponent as they misjust the situation entirely. Which can happen, which can happen. It's not something I'd say uh, count on happening all the time. Overall, Ostrom tend to work quite well versus the British since they are sort of the one with the more expensive infantry and slower there. So for example, the British you can quickly overwhelm them using Ostrom, catch them off guard and they overall lower in section numbers. That for example is one way. Versus the Soviets, Ostrom can be a bit more risky and similarly versus the Americans. Versus the Americans, the Ostrom probably work a bit better than say versus the Soviets. So you can use Ostrom to sort of try and catch an American player off guard as well. Though, of course, keep in mind using cover and working Ostrom together is going to be crucial. Because again, like one rifle squad versus one Ostrom squad up close, the rifleman will win. So you usually want two Ostrom scores. And again, with Ostrom, trying to manpower cost, and again, you them to build stuff, it's more manageable. But if you sort of have then your Ostrom together in teams like that, you know, two squads, where together you can actually also give an American player a bit of a harder time early on. And that's certainly also probably another thing to keep in mind. Generally, you don't want your Ostrom to work up like in singular squads until unsupported you always want them to work together in tandem with other units other Ostrom or the machine guns or say Panzer are going to do this an officer Ostrom should never sort of expect to be fight on their own I mean you can sort of have one running around behind like for to grab territory on its own but at the front line like close to the enemy they should never be isolated on their own like unless they're maybe like in a strong building or a really solid defensive position with a light machine and they can maybe expect to hold off another unit but really again you want Ostrom to work in tandem with other things and so that's really again where they excel it's kind of also what the Wehrmacht is built around the Ostrom even more so so I think that sort of covers up A, always keep them in cover outside of cover again it lets us if you expect them you're grabbing territory of course again not too big of a deal but again in any sort of combat situation they need cover or they are absolutely bloody useless work your Ostrom together and have a plan long term for what you want to do for them. Usually sort of how to replace them. And you know have other stuff to work with them. Because again in a longer match. They are basically going to drop off by the late game. Since they really cannot keep up with the tanks to support them. Which really hampers the utilities of your late game. It's going to be very heavily built around tanks pushing. And then supporting them with infantry. And again the Ostrom just don't work with that. Stuff that also works great with them is half tank command bunkers. Due to the low reinforcement speed of course. Be careful not to get caught up in any engagement. Because you can quickly bleep yourself out with it. So hopefully this little video has been instructional for you, hopefully give you some ideas for matches, how to get the most out of the Ostrom while playing with this glorious or these glorious doctrines. And then hash to subscribe, like, share, comment, press the bell button as well so you're more likely to get videos day after day. And of course feel free to donate or pledge on Patreon to support the mighty propaganda cast and keep it going. And this is Imperial signing off and see you all another time for another video. Cheers.